Good morning. Welcome to Mays Manor United Methodist Church. We light this candle as a symbol that God is in the house. And not just our house, but your house too. This morning we're going to start worship with a song. Jesus welcomed toll collectors and sinners into his community, which includes all of us. So let's welcome everyone to worship in the comments during our welcome song.
Please join us in the call to worship. Come to us, Christ our hope. Come to us, Christ our peace. Come to us, Christ our joy. Come, Lord, come. The written word will be read by our lay leader, Erica. Good morning, Mays Manor. Your scripture today is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low, and uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him and his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Our mission is to be a church where people actually live like Jesus. And this Advent, we are getting ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We invite everyone to join us for our countdown to Christmas and do the daily activities on the Mays Manor Advent calendar. This week, I get extra credit for sharing a picture of our Advent calendar chain. Now, Amy and Leah are going to share a favorite Christmas tradition and light the Advent candle. Hi, I'm Amy, and this is... Lega, and our Christmas tradition that we wanted to talk about was decorating the Christmas tree. Um, we, it seems every year it's getting later and later because my work desk happens to sit right where the tree is, right? Yeah. So what's your favorite part of decorating the tree, Leia? I, I normally get to um, put up the star at the top. Oh, yeah. And dad lifts you up to do that, right? Yeah, so that's your favorite part. So we're going to light the Advent candle. Do you want to read it? Who do you want me to? We light this candle as a symbol of the Prince of Peace. May the visitation of your Holy Spirit, O oh God, make us ready for the coming of Jesus, our hope and joy. O oh come, O oh come, Emmanuel. Ready? I won't hurt you. Oh. There's our candle. Dad's sister. <laughs> Let's join together in singing our centering song. Silence stars go by. 
for the children's message. Today, Lori and I are going to do another activity from the Maze Manor Advent Calendar, which is to make Christmas cards. So what materials do we need? We have paper, and we have markers, and crayons. It seems like I never have the time to send Christmas cards. I think last year I didn't even get to send Christmas e-cards. But this year it's more important than ever to let people know that we're thinking about them. So we're making some cards for shut-ins, which are people who can't leave their homes. This year I think they might need a little extra Christmas cheer. Of course, you don't have to make cards, you can also buy them to send to people. But we hope that you'll join us for the rest of this month as we count down to Christmas. Now I want you to take a few moments to think about the things that you've seen in the news in this past week that raise your anxieties and fears. Picture the people who you know in your personal life who are in some special need of God's grace and reflect on the good things, the blessings, the things that God has given to you in these recent days. And lift your prayers up to God and let your worries go. At this time, you can uh, take a few moments to type your prayer requests into the comments while Lee reads our prayer list. Good morning. As always, please pray for all those affected by COVID for those who care for them in so many ways, and for those who are working on a vaccine. For our church family, please pray for Alice and Kevin, for Hillary, Louise, and Bob. And praises this week are that Bill was hospitalized with COVID, but is home and feeling much better. Uh, the church got a note from Mary and Glendale thanking us for their weekly phone calls, and Ruth has recovered from COVID also. The new church service this past Sunday that brings us closer together was wonderful and for God's love. Lord, hear our prayers.
Let us pray. Ever-present God, you taught us that the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Grant that we may ever be found watching for the coming of your Son. Save us from undue love of the world, that we may wait with patient hope for the day of the Lord, and so abide in him that when he appears we will not be ashamed. These things we ask in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we are going to receive our tithes and offerings, and you can continue to support the mission of the church in a couple of ways. You can go online to mazemanorumc.org slash give, or you can take this time to go ahead and write your check and get it ready to mail in during the offering song. God is alive and active among us. Amen? I think we are all aware that 2020 was a hard year. Here in our nation, I think that these past 12 months may have had more conflict than any other year in my lifetime. In some places around the world, things were much worse. In 2020, there were 18 wars being fought around the world. There were 690 million people who lived in hunger, which comes to about 9% of the world's population. And there were 689 million people who lived in poverty. That means that last year, hundreds of millions of people were in a daily conflict to survive. Now, at the end of a long year, Christmas is coming. And Christmas is a season of hope, peace, and joy. 
So today I want to talk a little bit about Christ, our peace. To do that, we're going to read between the lines of the peace of Isaiah. This scripture was written for a time of conflict. The people of Israel were in exile, and that means they had been driven out of their homes. They were in a vulnerable situation where there was this constant threat of war, hunger, and poverty. It was not a time of peace. There was no peace in the world, and there was no sense of peace. Isaiah says, Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Comfort, comfort. There is this repetition for emphasis here of comfort, comfort, C comfort, comfort, that there may not be peace yet, but there will be peace coming. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So the people of Israel had spent 40 years wandering around in the wilderness before they came in to the land. Now they have been kicked out of parts, of parts and places of the land, and they are experiencing the wilderness of exile. But here you get this promise that God is going to uh, make a highway in the wilderness, and then God is going to bring them out of their wilderness and bring them back into a land of security and peace. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. In these verses, we are not sure who the speaker is, but we do know that we are being given this message that nothing is permanent in this world. Not the good things, not the bad things. So peace comes from the Word of God. Peace comes from the work of God. Peace comes from the comfort of God. And get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. As Christians, we see these good tidings taking place in the birth, life, death, resurrection, and coming of Christ. And Christ brought good news to the weak, good news to the hungry, good news to the vulnerable. Christ brought peace to the world, and to the people. And when we read between the lines of these verses, this Advent season, on our countdown to Christmas, the message that it gives to us and speaks to us today is that Christ brings peace. Christ brings peace. Still, I have to admit that it does kind of drive me a little bit crazy when people talk about world peace at Christmas. 
It is such a cliché. Every year around this time, everybody starts talking about peace. Even though we all know that December the 25th will not be any more peaceful than any other day. We all know that there will still be war, hunger, and poverty. We all know there will still be conflict in the world. So many of the conflicts in the world around us are beyond my control that there are times when it is overwhelming to think about how much conflict there really is. I think for me, sometimes I want to use Christmas as a way to escape the realities of this world. You know, I, I do not want to deal with the realities of the conflict, and so I escape by doing things like buying presents. Now, I am happy to report that I recently finished my Christmas shopping for this year. I got presents for my extended family. I got presents for my wife. Even most of my kids were good enough to get presents this year. It may be because these last 12 months have been so uniquely challenging, but for whatever reason, the conflicts in the world nagged at me this year while I was doing my Christmas shopping. You know, people all around the world are in this daily conflict to survive, and here I am singing fa la 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 while shopping for presents. Now, I want to be clear here that I'm not suggesting that people should never do anything fun to celebrate Christmas. Uh, we all need celebration in our lives to renew our spirit. But I do think that at Christmas time we should always keep in mind who it is that we are celebrating. We are celebrating Christ, our peace. Christ came to bring peace into the world by changing things for the better. Christ came to bring a sense of peace to people in need of comfort. Christ came to bring the peace of comfort, comfort to the people. Christmas celebrates the coming of the Prince of Peace. And the peace of Christ is more than just a warm, fuzzy feeling that you get from receiving presents. The peace of Christ comes from letting Christ comfort you. The peace of Christ comes from working with Christ to reach out to comfort others. This past Tuesday, our Christmas countdown advent calendar encouraged everyone to drop off hats, gloves, and scarves at the preschool. So on Tuesday, I put on my hats and gloves to scrape off the windshield of the car because it happened to be the day after the very first snow of the year. And for everyone who can see the picture, you can tell I really enjoyed it. The trip down to the church was like driving through a winter wonderland with snow and ice frozen on the trees. The church building was covered in snow. While we were Christmas shopping, my family had picked up hats and gloves to donate to the church. We had the kids drop them off in the boxes so we wouldn't have to be outside in the cold. Along with the items you all donate, they will be given to the community at our Christmas market this Saturday. The Christmas market is designed to bring peace into the world. We're going to give away hats, gloves, and scarves to give people just a, a bit of extra comfort in a winter when we all need to be spending a little bit more time outside. Now, don't worry if you didn't drop off your hats and gloves and scarves this past Tuesday. We will continue to collect them until this Friday. Also, at our Christmas market, we are partnering with the Charitable Pharmacy of Central Ohio to give away free flu shots. So if you have not gotten your flu shot yet, this is your chance. And finally, at the market, we'll be giving away food to over 500 people who otherwise could go hungry. And with winter coming in, um, we are always looking for people who are willing to bundle up and volunteer. It is a small thing to volunteer or to donate to the Christmas market, but it is a way to celebrate the true meaning of Christmas. 
Christ was not born so that we could all get presents. Christ came into this world to bring peace to people who are vulnerable. Now, I want to say that the Christmas market has become an important tradition for me. You know, I may not be able to create world peace this Christmas, but I can bring peace to my little corner of the world. I can bring peace to my community. I can bring peace to my family, at least to a certain extent. And working with Christ to bring peace into the world gives me a sense of peace. This month, I'd like to invite you to join me in our countdown to Christmas. Christmas is only 19 days away. In 19 days, we will celebrate the birth of Christ, and Christ brings peace. So welcome the peace of Christ into your life this Christmas. Let peace begin in you. Let peace begin in your family. Let peace begin in your community. Help Christ bring peace in to this world. Then we will all be a little bit closer to world peace. Let's pray. Lord, we give thanks to you for the coming of Christ, our peace. We confess to you that there are times when we feel overwhelmed by the conflict around us. So this Christmas, we invite you to send your spirit into our hearts so that we can be filled with your comfort and we can help Christ bring peace into your world. These things we ask in the name of Christ and all God's people say, Amen. Today we get to celebrate the God who gives us peace in a special way as we join together in Holy Communion. So I'd like to invite you to join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Body of Christ, given for you. Take, eat. Blood of Christ, shed for you. Take, drink. Let's celebrate the God who gives us comfort with a song.
Now let us trust in God, let us live like Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, let peace begin in you. So let's all say goodbye to each other in the comments, and remember to do your daily activities on the Advent calendar so you don't fall behind. And remember, the church is not a building, the church is the people. So even though our building may be mostly closed, the church is always open. Amen.